Welcome to The Screen Queen, the show where I'll be talking about your favorite TV show or your favorite movie. You'll just have to listen to find out. This is your host, Samantha Parrish. Hello there and happy holidays from your favorite media queen. This is your host, Samantha Parrish. So here we are. It is the last episode for the year on The Screen Queen. I had to take a step back and look at my show as a whole and realize that this has been the first full year for The Screen Queen. This year truly felt like a challenge for me as a podcaster to maintain my other show, Paris Passages Podcast, and maintain this one. But I'll be honest, this is the show that I love the most. I love being able to finally get to present the material about movies and TV shows in the same coattails of the other critiquers that I have followed for years. And I really enjoyed the episodes that came through this year. Some of my favorite movies. We got to do some specials. I got to have my first guest on the show. It's been very productive. But I think we can all con- can agree that this was a shitty year. <laughs> oh my goodness. For me, after finding out that my grandfather uh, got diagnosed with cancer, it's been a lot this year to have to take myself out of the picture as a creator for some instances this year and then come back to the show when I was ready. And I really appreciate those that have been patient with me to alter my schedule with the many things that 2023 has thrown at me this year. And I've heard so many stories from my friends about what this year has been like, and we're just so ready to kiss this year goodbye. Like, we can smell the new year already. I see so many people having their New Year's resolutions that they're just like, I just don't want the same shit to happen next year. I learned my lesson. I had my 13th reason. I'm done. I have so many plans for 2024. I have just released the news about a new story that I'm working on, so that's also going to alter some stuff in the future, but I'll give y'all the heads up whenever the alters the schedule comes through. But, until the new year is here, it's time to do the countdown for the greatest hits, the best of 2023 on the Screen Queen. But before I get into the best of 2023, I have some extra Christmas trivia that I wanted to share that came to my attention after I aired the Christmas episodes. Like, I sat there like, oh my god, this would have been perfect. And I thought, well, let's just go ahead and have it as a little extra before the year wraps up. So I found out the darndest thing that connects my first episode of the Christmas series and the last episode of the Christmas series. And that is a man named William Hickey. I found out that He was Dr. Finkelstein from The Nightmare Before Christmas, and he was (laughs) Uncle Lewis at Christmas Vacation. I couldn't have made that happen, even if I tried, that that's the man that connects those two episodes. Like, it makes me wish that I knew that in before, (laughs) and so I could be able to put the two together. But wow, that was just a cool thing I wanted to share. And then one last little thing. I found out a cameo that I'm surprised is not talked about enough. In the movie Elf, where one of the elves turns to Buddy and he goes, Buddy, are you all right? That elf? It's Ralphie from A Christmas Story. I I really wish that I caught on to that, but they they made him look so... But he's so old at that point, I would have never guessed. But when you, like, kind of see him in the right light and you put the picture beside, it's like, oh, Ralphie! It is was such a cool thing to have to, to see that connection come through. It's like a nice little Easter egg that presents itself every Christmas. It makes me wish I liked Elf more so I could enjoy that reference now that I've watched A Christmas Story. But I just thought those were some really cool pieces of trivia to add in as a little extra gift about the Christmas series. So now it's time to get into the best of what happened with the show. Now in my mind, I love all of these episodes as if they were my children. All 76 of them that I give 
the care, the love, the attention, sometimes some frustration too, and I love them so much and put them out to the world, and I'm very proud of the episodes that go out there. But it never ceases to amaze me which specific episodes are favored in the long run. Like, there are some episodes that I put out that I've been, like, waiting to talk about, like, a favorite movie or a favorite TV show, and it doesn't get a lot of traction. But then I'll put one out of an episode that I was either frustrated with or something that I wasn't sure how it was going to go, and it becomes golden, and I'm like, oh, wow, okay then. Like, it's a nice thing as a creator that I get to consistently see the surprise of which episodes are going to be favored. It's like the saying goes that you can't really predict your audience. And I love that with the lotto system I have, I never really know what episode is going to be the thing. It's like a wonderful mystery I get to have to myself. And to get the answer to one of those mysteries is which episodes were downloaded the most and which ones grew in popularity. There's a major difference between having an episode that is downloaded the most and one that has some consistent in still getting downloaded every single month. Like I have some episodes that have reached their download time and they get forgotten about and then there are some that still found a way to be consistent despite not having a high download count. If that makes any sense. So starting with the whole of the show of what were the episodes that have been most downloaded. I did this last year for my first best of On the Screen Queen, and those five are, hi, I'm the Screen Queen, welcome to the show with 48 downloads, which I find kind of ironic that the most downloaded episode is the first episode that I made. The second one is the best of 2022, ironically. (laughs) The third is Courage, the Cowardly Dog of Our Childhood. Fourth is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, A Twist in the Past. And last is In the Line of Fire, A Twist in Time. All of my earlier episodes. It is interesting to see that it only slightly changed a little bit from last year. And then getting to talk about it now. It'll make me wonder what's going to happen next year when... Uh, it, if that will ever change with newer episodes or if the older ones pick up steam again. It's kind of a lovely mystery that, yes, I do have an answer, but it's not the final answer because it's interesting to see how the show is going to go in the future. So for the episodes that were the most popular in consistency, this one, this, this kind of rocked my world. Number one was... The best of 2022, so here we go again. That just seems to ring a whole lot. I did notice that one was consistently downloaded every time I got my my email notification. Second was Die Hard. I love that. Third was Apt Pupil. Also love that. And fourth was the first episode of my spinoff series, Trailer Time with Megan, or as I call it, Mathrigan. And last was Ghost. I I really like the fact that the the popular episodes are very different than the most downloaded ones and knowing the fact that those were the ones that I worked my ass off on. So to see a popular download list versus a most downloaded list. Like both of them, like I mentioned with my episodes, they're all like my children, so I love both of these lists the same way I do the whole show. But I do love how they're vastly different and getting to truly see what makes them different. And it'll be interesting to see how that list will change next year when I get the most downloaded stats as well as the most popular stats. While I was preparing to write this episode and make the most of this spotlight for the end of the 2023 run, I had to think, well, what was my favorite episode? And... Like I mentioned, I love all these episodes equally, but the Kingsman episode was the first one that came to my mind. I truly felt challenged with that episode to have to tackle three movies, and I've I've been no stranger to tackling a series on the show with doing Rambo, Cars, uh, gosh, the Grinch one, but the Kingsman was just very important and very different, where I really showed a lot of different types of 
creative criticism, that it's a series that I love, but I also had to be fair to say the things I didn't like about it and give it its flowers, but also give it some uh, points of criticism that I couldn't really ignore because I feel like when you love a movie so much, you also can't ignore the flaws about it and not excuse the flaws of a certain film. And that was like the first challenge I felt like I had for myself since I reviewed the Rambo series, where that's also a series that I love, but I can't just not point out the flaws of what happened with that series. A close second, I would have to say that place goes to my birthday series episode when I covered Yu Yu Hakusho. I think I have talked about that anime to death, and I love it so much, and I love that that was the first anime that got to be talked about on the Screen Queen. And I actually have gone back and like listened to my episode again, and wanted to see if there's anything else I could have glossed upon, and I felt so proud of the way that one turned out. That of all the commentators that have ever talked about this anime, I love how my spin was a little bit different, but very personal. I had so many personal stories that I've been wanting to share for so long, and knowing the fact that it has a home on this show makes me very happy. But with the favorites does come the frustrating ones. And I feel like if you're not getting frustrated with your show or anything that you work on creatively, then there's no drive, there's no strive. And as much as there are times I record episodes that I have to re-record if I don't feel that I've really made something that's very interesting, unique, or if I don't feel proud of it, then it's not worth putting out. And believe me that there are times that I've had to record segments like seven to ten times, I mean, shit, it gets up to, like, Stanley Kubrick ranges of how many takes I have to do for a certain segment of the show. The ones I could think of on top of my head that were very frustrating, one of them was Men at Work. I truly felt like I was doing an episode that I couldn't make interesting. It was a, a movie that was a thing back in the 90s, And it wasn't really much of a thing. It just was, you know, came and gone. Kind of like a fart in a crowded elevator. Like, you notice it's there, but then it goes away quite soon after. And you go on with your life. And every episode that I put out, I want to make something interesting about it. Or make a a, a unique tie to the episode. Anything that's going to make it stand out and feel like I'm bringing the most for a show. And for men at work, I'm like, okay, well... I can do what I can do and just move on to the next episode. And I don't regret that I had a bit of a far-fetched pick that I could present about that movie. And then there would be others after that. Men at Work was just going to be one in the pile of episodes that were going to be a challenge to create on how I could make it unlike others, but still have enough material to go off on. The other frustrating one that comes to my mind is the one that I did before I started the Christmas series with Heartbreak Ridge. And I'm a Clint Mann fan. You can give me a Clint Eastwood movie any day of the week, but that one, I just felt like it was like the last challenge of the year to do a commentary on a film that had to do with concepts that I wasn't familiar with because it's a military film and having to make sure that I got everything correct. And it's a big thing that followed me with this show is I know how much power I have with saying a lot of information about a show. And the last thing I want is to feel like I'm misinforming people if they are going to carry on what I happen to say in the episode. And there are times I have to go back and say I was wrong about this or I'm not sure about it. But Heartbreak Ridge being a very multifaceted film that goes through many avenues of the Korean War. I'm like, okay, this could go horribly wrong if I am not careful with what I say in this episode. Because I had that happen earlier this year. Earlier in 2023, I was fresh-faced to bring on the new year to see what the episodes were going to be like. And I was very surprised that we had two crime episodes and then we had... Pocahontas and apt people so it looks kind of weird like it was following a pattern and then it went okay we're gonna go to an animated film and then we're gonna go to a controversial film so it was (laughs) it was a hell of a first month for 2023 on the screen queen 
when I got to Pocahontas, that was the episode that I was looking forward to. With that being one of my favorite animated films, despite the fact that it's an eyesore of history, I still couldn't wait to elaborate on many of the things that I loved about the film and got to share about it. And right after Pocahontas came, Apt Pupil. And I'm like, what a drastic change to go from a wholesome film to a very critical film with so many elements that if I don't present it right, I could be in a whole world of hurt. But then the ironic thing happened was that I didn't get that with Apt Pupil, but it could have happened with Pocahontas. There is a savior to this story, and their name is Ams. I've mentioned Ams on the show before with some of their favorite movies that I got to give them a spotlight to, and they've always gone out of their way to spread this show. Like, they're the reason why this show was very popular in another state, and I'm so grateful that they have been one of the close friends of my life. They have been pushing the show. But I also admire the way that AMS has a unique way to educate people. And that education lesson came for me after the episode of Pocahontas aired. So me and AMS, we were having our usual weekly chat. And they said to me, so I want to talk to you about your Pocahontas episode. And that's usually what they do because they want to talk about what they loved about the episode. And they went to say, I loved the episode, but there's something that I noticed in there that I wanted to bring to your attention. And I said, okay, what's up? What's going on? You know, I'm not going to dismiss a chance to learn. And they said, I heard you say Indian in the episode when that's not the correct terminology. And I had a feeling that this was not brought to your attention because you just kept saying it in the way that you went to explain things. And the more I kept listening to it, I just sat there like, oh, that's not good. She doesn't know. And they said, I want to bring this to your attention so that way you would know to use the term First Natives because that is what uh, Indigenous people like to be called. And I said, Oh my god, I didn't know that. And they said, well, how could you know? You grew up with the term cowboys and Indians, so it's an honest mistake. But I knew that I had to tell you so you would use that for your future episodes and not get canceled. And I'm like, well, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. So while I had them on the line, I wrote up the terminology note at the beginning of the description for the Pocahontas episode to show that it's come to my attention that I made a boo-boo, but that this boo-boo won't happen again. And I read the whole thing out to AMS, and they really felt that it got the point across without sounding like some kind of a YouTuber apology. And they said, thank you for being so cool about it. And I'm like, well, thank you for saving the show. I probably would have done the same mistake again, and I really appreciate that they wanted to tell me, but that it was imperative for me to know. But the thing that I look at the most in that entire situation is that they did not once make me feel bad for not knowing this information. As much as there are things that are common knowledge, some people are just not present for some of that information. It's not like school where you can miss a day, but then you'll get your recap of the notes, the homework, and what happened, or something like Dragon Ball Z, and you get this entire recap of what happened the past five or six episodes. But with something like this type of information that's going on in the world that I completely missed, it gave me the biggest sense of relief that I wasn't made to feel bad for not having that information, but that I'm also grateful that the information was given to me, not thrown at me. In this day and age, people are easily made to feel bad for not knowing everything because we're not mind readers. And like I said, we're not always going to be present for major parts of information but it's people like AMS that collect this information and know how to teach that to someone in the most kindest way. And I love them for that. But then the ironic thing happened. With Pocahontas being an episode that I uh, didn't know that I had been kind of accidentally messing up. The Apt Pupil episode was an episode I was terrified that I was going to mess up. To give a memory refresher on the plot of App Pupil, it was about a uh, soon-to-be high school graduate 
that blackmails his neighbor into telling him stories about the Holocaust. Otherwise, if he doesn't, he's going to go tell the authorities that there is a Nazi that has not been uh, prosecuted. And of course, that means the other guy is going to do whatever he can in his power to make that kid's life miserable. It just becomes a pissing contest on who's a worse human being is basically what apt people is. But the fact that the plot follows a lot of very heavy topics like homophobia, uh, sadomasochism, the Holocaust, it's just... It's so much. You could just throw a dart at any bad thing, and that bad thing is probably in the film. And then when I had to record it, I thought, oh my god, if I don't play my cards right, this is going to be terrible. I can't afford to not address the hard topics of the film, but then find a very easy way to talk about it in a time that has topics that are not easy to talk about. So I was sweating pinballs trying to record that episode. I think I went through like five t-shirts. And I just thought, well, whatever happens, happens. I did the best that I could do for the episode to commentate on it the best of my abilities and my knowledge and pure honesty for what I gave that episode. And after it came out, I had a couple of friends reach out to me to tell me how much they loved the episode and that it made them really think about who they went to high school with. Like, that was a first for me that I gave an episode that was very thought-provoking on a lot of issues that are hard to talk about today. I believe around the time that I recorded the Apt Pupil episode, there was, there was news about some of the school shootings that was going on. And media and movies can go hand in hand or it can just be like pouring arsenic on fire and it gave me the big sense of relief that I was able to honor these topics the best of my abilities and that people got something out of it. Every episode I always hear that what they loved about it but this was the first that it really hit a hot topic. And then having to look at the parallel that I had the Pocahontas episode come out that I was looking forward to and then I had to go through a learning experience to make sure I didn't make the same mistake I did with that episode, and then to think I made several mistakes in the Apt Pupil episode, and that turned out to be a really great one. Just the way that it flip-flopped, it still gets to me whenever I think about it, and I really appreciate that I had the help from AMS to make sure that I didn't have the same mistake with Pocahontas, but knowing that I can be challenged in episodes like Apt Pupil kind of serves as like my double feature for how I really grew in this show. Now, since I talked about the best of 2023, I figure it's time to give you guys a little sample about what's going to be coming in 2024. I want to do more theme months to weed out some of the movies and TV shows that have been there a little bit too long. I mean, we're a year into the show and there's some selections I know have still been sitting there from the day that I created the Lotto system. I do have a plan for the summer to do a whole patriotism month for July. So that is so far in the works. I am going to be having some guests in the show. Last year I had my friend Ann Lowe on here and I've been getting asked by some of my friends to make a guest appearance on the show and that is still in the planning process but I definitely can confirm that near the end of the month we are going to be having a guest on the show. I'm looking forward to it. I have been in the planning process of that one and I'm looking forward to adding that kind of variety to the show that I'm not biting up more than I can chew since most of you know I'm a multifaceted creator between running two podcast shows, creating the Inglorious Inc. series, and the story that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode that I am in the process of getting greenlit in 2024. It's a lot of avenues that I go down, but with all the avenues that I go through, I always make sure that I can gravitate back to those avenues without having to feel like I'm running out of gas. And I just... I want to say thank you to those that have been there with me this year, both in my personal life and just supporting the the show and all of my other platforms. 
it means so much to me in this clusterfuck that we call 2023. I mean, that, we're just going to have to call that. It's going to go 2020, 21, 22, clusterfuck 2024. That's exactly what I would do. And shit, like this year's clusterfucks had so much between my grandfather getting diagnosed with skin cancer and we're having to deal with that next month and the tough choices I had to make in so many friendships and realizing that there are people that you're supposed to have in your life that are going to support you and then looking at the ones that really truly weren't meant to be on my path, that they weren't bad people, but we just, we just couldn't really be friends and... I have the people in my life now that are pushing me forward to keep going with my books, my shows, and getting to other places, and it, the support has helped out through so much of that. I've gotten messages from friends uh, helping me with all of my ordeals this year and still supported all of my endeavors. And I appreciate the support from all the other ones that don't know me in real life and still support it like I see all the stats all the time I know the show is going places and it's wonderful and so comforting to me that everything is paying off and that I'm still on the right track and I just want to say thank you thank you so much so with that sappy stuff out of the way it is time to find out what the first episode is going to be on the screen queen for 2024 so now we're back to the old big box of stuff and lord I forgot how much I put in here here we go. Alrighty, let me mix this up really good. Let me hope no pieces come flying out. I need a better system. I need that, like, I need that one they use on a Wheel of Fortune. That would be so much better. Here we go. Let me pick from the bottom. Okay, what are you? I don't need, like, 10,000 pieces. I just need one. Come on. Come on. I'm going to pick you. What are you? Tell me your secrets. Okay. That's interesting. I'm down for that. Alrighty, so the first episode in 2024 is going to be Disney's Robin Hood. That's going to be fun. Y'all know I, I'm always down for a Disney movie as much as I can make fun of them or crap on them. You can give me them any day. I love that. That is fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here. You all have a happy new year from your favorite media queen. And if you want to catch up with me in between uploads, you can find me on my Instagram at the Queen of the Screen. If you have any recommendations that you'd like to see for this, if you have any recommendations that you would like to see on the show in the new year, I'd love to hear it. If you want to see the funny movie-related content I put up on TikTok, you can find me at the Mystical Space Witch. And if you're interested in the book series that I wrote you can find it on amazon and i am almost out of steam that is my sign to sign off you all take care now and happy new year this is your screen queen signing off Bye bye <laughs>